the hallmark as we discuss is air flow limitation and this is evidenced evidenced by reduced fev1 levels subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder now let us move to the diagnosis of asthma okay so the diagnosis diagnosis of asthma more or less we come to uh, that judgment on clinical grounds but there are a lot of pitfalls in diagnosing asthma on clinical grounds everyone who wheezes is not asthmatic okay so wheeze may be seen in patients with heart failure it may be seen in patients with copd it may be seen with myriad other conditions so the diagnosis of asthma is is never should never be based on clinical judgment it should be based on spirometric evidence so what are the uh, spirometric evidence that we are looking for one the hallmark as we discuss is air flow limitation and this is evidence evidenced by reduced fev1 levels then reduced fev1 by fvc level and reduced peak expiratory flow rate so uh, remember in patients with bronchial asthma just like in patients with copd even the fvc is reduced so what is critically important is the ratio of fev1 by fvc if it is reduced it is leading more towards asthma uh, so if it is less than 70% we can consider the possibility of asthma but how do we strongly prove that the particular patient is asthmatic that is by demonstrating bronchodilator reversibility so what do we mean by bronchodilator reversibility whenever there is evidence of bronchoconstriction or air flow limitation on spirometry we subject those patients to the inhaled uh, short acting beta agonists so inhaled saba okay and reassess their uh, spirometric uh, parameters after 15 minutes remember all these are critical mcq points so inhaled saba duration is 15 minutes and when we reassess up to 15 minutes we should be able to demonstrate that their fev1 okay so this is critical fev1 increases by more than 12% or by more than 200 ml okay so 12 and 200 are the numbers so if you are able to demonstrate that after giving a short acting beta agonist and 15 minutes later if the fe1 even even has increased by 12% or more than 200 ml then the bronchodilator reverse reversibility is present that means they have airway hyperresponsiveness and that leans towards the diagnosis of bronchial asthma another way of demonstrating the uh, bronchodilator reversibility is by giving them by giving them oral cortico steroids for 2 to 4 weeks again remember an important mcq point 2 to 4 weeks okay if they throw an mcq where they say one week of oral corticosteroids and there is no demonstration of reversibility then asthma is ruled out no you have to give them for at least 2 to 4 weeks and then reassess if, if that route is followed or the corticosteroid route is followed if a uh, patient is already on uh, treatment then how would you reassess or how would you confirm the diagnosis of bronchial asthma see it, it happens in routine practice that uh, if someone reaches a gp or uh, a quack and they start off straight away with some medication like right? oral steroids or inhaled uh, agents just because he had some chronic cough or some evidence of wheeze but to confirm that he has bronchial asthma now there is a challenge because he is already exposed to drugs and how would we reassess how would we assess whether he has bronchodilator reversibility so for that you have to if he is on a uh, short acting beta agonist you can uh, give a break withhold it for 4 hours 
and then do the PFP and bronchodilator reversibility test. If they are receiving inhaled corticosteroids or long acting beta agonists, in that case, withhold for 12 hours. Okay. See, remember most of the uh, ICS and LABA, they work for less than 12 hours, but there is a drug uh, which can work for more than 12 hours, that is Indicaterol. So this duration of action is 24 hours. So as of now, this is the longest acting LABA that we know and it's an MCQ point, so remember that. Indicaterol is the longest acting LABA that we know or we use in clinical practice right now. Then another point I forgot to make is that much simpler to this is just assess their symptoms and assess the bronchodilator reversibility whenever those who are on treatment are symptomatic. Okay. You may ask me, they are exposed to drugs and then how can we assess reversibility when they, uh, in such case. But yes, you can assess because if they are symptomatic, that means they are either inadequately treatment, treated or they are non-responders non and you can definitely assess the uh, bronchodilator reversibility during the period when they are symptomatic. Okay. Now, uh, other uh, findings that may help us or give some clues uh, towards the uh, diagnosis is flow volume loops. Okay. So, uh, what happens in the bronchial asthma? Uh, when you see a flow volume loop, you will notice that the peak flow is reduced. Okay. And also, there is reduction in maximum expiratory flow. So, in a normal person, if we plot the volume in this direction, 1, 2, 3, 4 inches. And the flow in liters per minute, volume in liters. See, normally what we notice is in a normal person, we get a curve, something like this. I mean, I have not drawn it perfectly. But something like that. But in, in a patient with bronchial asthma, if you notice that the, the peak flow, the peak flow is more in a normal person, the peak flow is reduced, okay, and even the maximum expiratory flow is reduced, giving rise to a scalloped appearance. So the scalloped appearance of flow volume loops is seen in patients with bronchial asthma. Okay. Then uh, if you see the gas diffusion, the DLCO in patients with the uh, bronchial asthma is either normal okay, or minimally increased. as opposed to in patients with COPD. So here it is either normal or minimally increased. Okay. Then we discussed earlier that we demonstrate bronchodilator reversibility in patients with asthma. We can also demonstrate directly the airway hyperresponsiveness by subjecting them to provocative challenge with either methacholine or histamine. Here we can see uh, histamine or methacholine may trigger uh, the VAs or asthma in a select set of patients. So we can quantitatively assess the hyperresponsiveness using a criteria known as PC20. PC20 or provocative uh, challenge dose 20. So, what is PC20? It is the concentration of the methacholine or histamine or whatever you are using as a provocative agent. The concentration that concentration that is required to reduce the FEV1 by 20 percent. Okay. So, PC20 is basically the concentration of the uh, provocative agent that is needed to reduce the FEV1 by 20%. Okay. Then another 
not yet into practice but a significant uh, investigation that is fractional excretion of sorry frax, fractional exhalation of nitric oxide okay. see the nitric oxide can be considered as a marker of eosinophilic inflammation So the more the uh, fractional exhalation of nitric oxide, more stronger is the eosinophilic inflammation. Okay. On on the uh, other hand, lesser it is, lesser is the active eosinophilic inflammation that is going on. Currently, it is used in, in research-based studies, but I it finds a use in assessing the compliance of the patients to inhaled corticosteroids. If they are not taking the inhaled corticosteroids adequately, then there is baseline inflammation that is going on and the uh, FENO would be high. If uh, the compliance is good, then FENO is probably going to be low. Okay.